I'm a documentary photographer in love with the polar regions, especially with polar night, when light, what we actually need for photography, doesn't even exist. As a photographer, I'm interested in who are the scientists who deliver important climate data for us? How do they work and live in one of the most harshest environments on our planet? I spent three months in 24 hours of darkness close to the North Pole by photography mosaic expedition, the largest Arctic Ocean expedition of our history. During mosaic expedition, Polashta and Icebreaker was frozen into the sea ice and drifted for one entire year while scientists conducted climate research. During polar night, the only light we had came from the spotlight of our ship, the headlamp of the participants, and on clear days from the moonlight. I was fascinated by this darkness. This was the most beautiful thing I have ever experienced. I was on the sea ice every single day in all kinds of weather. Many days we had negative 55 Fahrenheit with wind chill. It was so cold that changing the battery froze my hand and yet this was the place I wanted to be. Before every big decision in my life, I ask my 85-year-old me for advice. Exactly 10 years ago, I gave up my well-functioning business life in Vienna to follow my dreams. With two suitcases and an address with my hand, I moved to New York City to study at the International Center of Photography. I didn't know if I would make it, if I would really become the photographer I had dreamed of. But I knew if I didn't take this chance, I would never have an answer, and I would only regret it by the time I reach 85. Today, after 10 years of hard work, challenging times, and many gifts from the universe, I'm grateful that my 85-year-old self pushed me to be brave and follow my dreams. I was born in Hungary, behind the Iron Curtain. At an age of six, I loved watching a science show which started with an intro showing a polar expedition where participants marched through a snowstorm. This fascinated me, and I was dreaming to experiencing something like that one day. But we lived be behind closed borders, where we couldn't even get to the snowy Austrian Alps just an hour away. The Iron Curtain eventually dissolved, and there I was in New York, graduating from the school with a one-page spread in the New York Times, and hoping to continue my life as a photographer. The road was not easy, and I had to keep working hard to achieve my goals, goals and dreams. In 2015, on a summer day, sitting in my tiny apartment in New York that time, I received an email that completely changed my life. The director of photography of Audible magazine, Sabine Meyer, sent me an assignment to go to the Arctic Ocean documenting climate research. I felt that this trip will change my life forever. During this expedition, I completely fell in love with the Arctic Ocean. I spent sleepless nights on the bridge of our ship, mesmerized by the view, by the constant changing sea ice. I felt from my inner voice 
that this is the path I have to follow in life. I believe there are no coincidences in life. Right after the expedition, I wanted to do everything to continue my work, working in the polar regions. Therefore, I traveled to Norway, having many meetings with scientists for future collaboration. And while I was there, as a surprise, an other gift from the universe, the director at that time of the German Alfred Wegener Institute for Polar and Marine Research, Karin Lochta, was there to give a lecture. Right after her talk, I introduced myself, my dreams, and goals working in the Arctic. We met next day again, and right there at her breakfast table, she offered two expeditions to join. My life, my path, working in the polar region started. Before Mosaic, I participated in many expeditions in the Arctic and Antarctica, all in 24 hours of daylight. I knew that mosaic would be different because our time on the sea ice would be in 24 hours of darkness and several weeks away from any kind of help. Therefore, we had to prepare for all kinds of danger like fire on board. I had to do every training as a photographer and as a participant. The photography part was the most challenging. This is me collapsed in the shade after photographing a firefighting training in 30 kilogram heavy gear in 120 Celsius fire container. Each group in the training came into the container for 10 minutes while I stayed there for two hours. The firefighting training lasted for several days and for me, Many days ended with running tears from exhaustion. This is me again in black during the next training, and I promise I was much more active. We were left for 60 hours for a survival training on the coast of Svalbard in the land of 3,000 polar bears with no food, no water, and only five sleeping bags for 14 people, and the rescue box with some equipment. I was drained by the lack of sleep, and I was freezing because my only red, warm polar overalls got wet within the first hour. Polar bear safety was a major topic. <laughs> I don't think they seem so dangerous here, but we had to learn how to encounter them. We learned how to use a rifle and a signal pistol, which luckily we only used to scare them away. The trainings prepared us for what was to come, like Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin at the moon landing, only with polar bears. Three months in polar night felt like being on the moon, like being on another planet. The sea ice looked gray like the surface of the moon, and the sky was black like the universe. I always had to remind myself that we were standing on a sea ice with 4,200 meter ocean beneath our feet. We experienced many storms, the first one with 100 kilometer per hour. The sea ice was moving, and in the drifting snow, we could barely see the openings. While photographing, a colleague of mine from a film team found, felt into the freezing waters through a crack just two meters behind me. Due to the loud wind, I couldn't hear anything. 
and luckily two other people saw it and helped him out immediately. That was the reason why it was so important that we work as a group on the sea ice. In storms far away from the ship, many times this was the reality how much we could see. Sometimes so much, and sometimes too much if someone looked into your eyes with their headlamp. I remember when I first experienced the ice ridging event. It was as loud as someone would have started a generator. The sea ice started to move under my feet like an earthquake, and the only thing I wanted to do is to run away. But you can't, you are standing on a sea ice. It is much safer to stand still and watch. Getting to scientific stations during storms, it was always very slow and challenging. We had to use sledges to cross cracks safely. Arctic is the fastest changing environment on our planet, where average temperature is rising two to three times faster than elsewhere. During polar night, first time measurements were taken this is why this expedition was so important to understand the processes of the Arctic Ocean, also during winter time, to, to be able to have better data for future climate prognosis. I was waiting weeks to photograph Miss Piggy, the red tether balloon. She is used for atmospheric measurements. And on that day, when we were out, on the day when we were out six to eight hours, it was negative 40 Celsius degree with wind chill. By the time she was ready to be launched, my hands were frozen so much that I couldn't move them even wearing a gloves. I could barely take this one image while crying inside from pain. Apart from all the pain that froze my hands, for me, nothing can be compared to the beauty of polar night in the Arctic. We had the most modern and highest technology on the sea ice, and yet we lived a very simple life on board with no internet, no TV, and no mobile phone. Can you imagine living three months without internet and your mobile phones? The sea ice front of Paul Ashton was constantly broken and open. I was working on a cover story for the German Geo magazine and my editor, Christian Gogolin, asked me to photograph Polarstein head on. I didn't realize that this would be one of the most challenging pictures to take because I couldn't even get there. And finally, at the very end of our time on board, the sea ice closed again. But this territory was not explored. I went out with one of my colleagues, moving forward with two of my cameras, using the tripod poking the sea ice front of me. Luckily, we made it back dry. Immediately after the expedition, I traveled to Washington, D.C. And as I walked the streets, I realized I didn't have to watch every single step of mine, not to fall into the freezing waters. And I didn't have to be on constant lookout for polar bears. <laughs> I realized how alert I was during the expedition. No other place on this planet is like Arctic Ocean a land without soil, 
a land made of water, frozen water. This land with its beautiful life on and beneath can remain only if, if the water stays frozen. If it disappears, we will lose an entire ecosystem and we will have all the consequences. When I think about mosaic, I think about this picture. It raises a question in me. How far can we go to explore our planet? And how far can we go to follow our dreams? We discover the space, the deep seas, and for the first time, the Arctic Ocean during winter time, to have a better understanding about the changes in the Arctic and which changes will have, effect, will have effect on our life and the planet. Looking at this photo, my six-year-old self is grateful to be there where she wanted to be, and my 85-year-old self is smiling since I listened to her. Thank you very much. <laughs>